In this video, we will talk about type classes, a fundamental feature in Haskell. So when we have a function like plus, we would like it to be polymorphic so that we can do a plus on floats and on ints and on integers and whatever other numeric type we have. But then we cannot make the function totally polymorphic because then we would allow it to, for example, add trees or something like that. Uh, and of course, adding trees, I mean, how is that defined? Uh, that's not really, you know, we don't really know how that uh, is defined. So we need to constrain the type in some way. And that is done with this type constraint that we have here. Uh, that is called numA. Now, what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that this function works for any polymorphic type that has an instance of the num type class. Now, what does that mean? Well, we will look at the num type class in a second, but a type class basically defines some functions that need to be defined in a class. And for a type to be in that type class, it has to have an instance of such a class. Again, we will look at an example in a second. Just one side note, when, of course, when you use a function like this plus in another function, this type constraint propagates through. I think we will uh, look at type inference in another video, but this is just something to keep in mind. Okay, so how does the num type class look like? Well, you can get info on that with the colon info command in GHCI, and that's where you get some info on what functions are defined for types that that are in this type class. So for example, plus, minus, multiplication, negate, absolute, um, signum, which gives you a representation of the sign of this number, and from integer. Okay. So maybe let's look at other type classes that are really interesting, like show. If you want to print a type uh, in GHCI, for example, by just typing out this type, it has to have an instance of the show type class. Here we see something else which is interesting. We have this minimal shows prac and show. What does that tell us? Well, this tells us that we do not need to create all of the functions that we see here, all of the three, we actually only need to create either shows prac or show. And if we have one of these functions, all the other functions are implied. Um, that's a point where Haskell can then derive the other functions from. Just like here in this EQ type class, where we have types that are uh, that can be tested on equivalence, here we only need to define equals or not equals. And of course, the other function then is derived from the Boolean uh, inversion of the other function. Another important type class is ORT, where we have some ordering. Uh, by the way, what we can see here is that um, EQ implies ORT, or it doesn't really imply ORT, it's the other way around. So uh, in order for a type to be in the ORT type class, it also needs to be in the EQ type class. So everything that can be ordered can also be checked uh, for equivalence. Okay, and here we see that the minimal type class that we need to give is either the smaller equals or the compare function. Okay, so let's look at an example how to do such an instance of a uh, type class. So here we have a data type temperature, which uh, stores temperature either in Celsius or Fahrenheit. So that's a bit of a problem, because how do we compare that? Well, we create an instance of the EQ uh, type class for this temperature, and here we see that the not equals is not defined. It's derived implicitly. We only define the equals. And that's the point where we, well, if we have two Celsius uh, temperatures, we compare them. If we have two Fahrenheit, we compare them. And if we have some mixed temperatures, then we do some conversion and check that for equivalence. By the way, uh, this will probably... Um, well, not work correctly because floats are not that precise in Haskell. So this uh, 1.8 times C will probably, you know, have some rounding issues, but that's not that important here. The important thing here is, um, well, how to define such an instance of a type class. 
And of course, if we wanted temperature to, for example, be in the num type class, we would have needed to define much more functions, uh, but that always depends on your use case. So what you can sometimes see and do is this deriving. And deriving type classes can be, well, very beneficial. For example, if you want your data types to be printable, you don't want to write new instances of the show type class all the time. That would be, well, that would be a bit of a waste of a time. So we can do this deriving. And deriving means that Haskell has to figure out how to create an instance of this type class for this type. So with show, this is, I think, always possible if you use types that uh, have an instance of the uh, show type class. And how it does that is that in the end, the printed type just looks like the type you would type uh, it in in uh, Haskell. Now with the EQ, this is a bit different because we just seen how to correctly define the equivalence for this temperature type. The question is, how does this deriving EQ actually derive the equivalence? Well, it doesn't do it correctly. The derived equivalence does the following. It compares if the constructors are the same. And if they are, it compares whether all the arguments for the constructors are the same. This is structural equivalence because it looks at the structure of the data type and checks if, well, both are the same. So for a list, this totally makes sense. This derived equivalence for a list would be totally fine and the correct thing to do. Um, for a linked list, for a stack, for a queue, this would all, uh, all be fine. Uh, for a tree, it depends on your definition, but if you have a sorted binary tree, then it should be all right, I guess. Um, but for example, here, in the case of our temperature, this is not fine, because now comparing any Celsius to any Fahrenheit will always uh, be false. So be careful when deriving type classes. It doesn't always make sense. You always have to think about, does it make sense to compare these two structurally? And if it doesn't, you have to write your own uh, EQ type class.